Hello everyone. Information box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today immunology topic on body lines of defense, innate and acquired immunity. But before starting this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my upcoming lectures. Let's begin. In order to fight pathogenic invaders like bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasitic worms, aberrant cells, etc., the immune system is made up of a complex network of immune cells that collaborate with proteins like cytokines. With the exception of specific disorders like autoimmune diseases, they have a special capacity to tell self molecules apart from non self molecules. Except for identical twins, each person's bodily cells have a distant major histocompatibility complex protein on their surface which is used to distinguish between self and non-self. MHC1 and MHC2 are two different types of major histocompatibility complex proteins that distinguish the body's own cells from foreign or pathogenic cells and display antigen on the cell surface respectively. MHC2, however, is also present in immune cells called antigen-presenting cells, which display phagocytosed microbes on the cell surface. Red blood cells do not have MHC proteins. So in this topic we will learn innate and acquired defense systems, first line of defense and its second line of defense, which include phagocytes, eating cells and their relatives, then mechanism of second line of defense. Third, we will learn about the third line of defense, which includes humoral or antibody mediated immune response mechanism and then we we'll learn about self mediated immune response and its mechanism let's start with the understanding of innate and acquired defense systems two forms of bodily defenses exist against invaders the two types of reactions are acquired which can be also adaptive specific and innate which has the other meaning of natural or non-specific. No matter how often a pathogen is exposed, innate reactions are the same, but acquired reactions are better with each consecutive exposure to foreign particles. Phagocytic cells including neutrophils, monocytes and macrophages as well as natural killer cells are used in innate reactions. However, antigen-specific B and T cells or antigen-presenting cells are involved in adaptive responses. When a foreign attack occurs, innate reactions react right away, but adaptive responses need more time to respond. As a result, learned responses are referred to as particular and innate responses battle against certain sorts of invaders. The first and second line of defense are part of innate reaction, whereas the third line is part of learned response. With the help of this diagram, you can see the general principle of immune response. Basically, there are three types of lines of defense. Number one, first line of defense. Number two, second line of defense. And number three, third line of defense. Let's dive into the first line of defense. It is sometimes referred to as an external defensive system. The initial line of defense against the invasion of pathogens is composed of physical, chemical and biological defenses. They do not operate separately and may overlap depending on the activities. Number 1. Physical defenses Number 2. Chemical defenses Number 3. Biological defenses Physical defenses these include physical obstructions and mechanical defenses that prevent infections from entering through healthy skin and mucus. It includes skin, which has the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. These are the three layers of skin. The epidermis, which is the top layer, is densely covered in keratin and dead skin cells. These defect cells are constantly being replaced and shed. 
Because it is mechanically strong and very water resistant, keratin inhibits the development of microorganisms. Second, nasal hairs. While tiny cilia along the respiratory system, whisk mucus and trap inhaled particles toward body openings where they may be expelled through the body, nasal hairs filter air tainted with bacteria, dust and dirt. Last, mucus membrane. Mucus, a slimy material produced by mucus membrane lining the respiratory, urinary and reproductive systems, collect unwanted particles and guide them out of the body by mechanical processes including shedding, coughing, peristalsis and flushing of physiological fluids example urination and tears. Chemical Defenses this includes substances and enzymes in bodily fluids, a range of plasma protein mediators, cytokines, antimicrobial peptides, and inflammation-inducing mediators that kill pathogens on the surface of the body, at body openings, and on the linings of the inside of the body. This includes sweat, tears, and mucus and saliva. These all have pathogen-killing enzymes, such as lysozyme an enzyme present in saliva, sweat and tears which may destroy the cell wall of the bacteria and eliminate them. Similar to this, secretory IgA function by destroying peptide glycan in the bacterial cell walls. Damsidin, Cathelicidin, Defensin, Histatins and Bacteriocins are antimicrobial peptides. In reaction to pathogens on the skin, these antimicrobial peptides are created. Second, ceramin or earwax. The fatty acids in ceramin or earwax cause a pH drop to between 3 to 5, shielding the ordinary canal from external objects like germs. Fourth, gastric juice. Pathogens that enter the stomach through the mouth or nose are killed by extremely acidic nature of gastric juice which has the pH of 2 to 3. Number 5. Urine Acidic urine flow kills microorganism and is directed out of the urethra. Lastly, serum which is an unsaturated fatty acid is found to include certain molecules that make it easier for some microorganisms to get the nourishment they need while including reducing water loss and inhibiting microbial development. Number third, biological defenses. These are supplied by pleasant and helpful living microbes. These are naturally occurring organisms that live on our skin, in our bowel, and in various other locations, including the mouth, stomach, reproductive system, etc. These stop pathogen adhesion and colonization by occupying accessible cellular binding sites, generating an acidic environment by the fermentation of carbohydrates to acids and outcompeting them for resources. The result, the local normal microbiota helps to chemical defenses by producing bacteriocins which have antimicrobial properties. Here you can see different types of antigen presenting cells are defending the body against certain pathogens. As you can see, the virus antigens are taken up by the dendritic cells, as microphage takes the bacteria. Early B cells has the defensive mechanism against microbial toxins. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Second line of defense. Another name for it is the immune system. When the first line of protection is breached, the second line of defense within our body kicks in and becomes active. In other words, when the pathogen successfully overcomes the first line barriers, the second line of defense then comes into contact with them. To identify and get rid of any non-specific pathogens that are ingested into the body, this system requires the engagement of mostly immune cells, primarily white blood cell, leukocytes such as phagocytes, natural killer cell, dendritic cells, mast cells and complement proteins. Immunological memory doesn't exist here. 
as you can see with the help of this diagram the mechanism of phagocytosis let's learn about phagocytes eating cells and their relatives so we have basophils which makes up only 1% of white blood cells since they emit heparin and histamine when activated, they are renowned for their inflammatory response linked to allergies and asthma. Second, mast cells. Despite being tissue-based, they have functional similarities with basophils. As a result of being activated by various inflammatory mediators and antigens, they exhibit an inflammatory response. Once it detects pathogen, it produces granules that contain inflammatory histamine. Third, monocytes. They are referred regarded as trash truck or vacuum cleaners of the immune system and are associated with scavenging. These make up between 2 to 6% of the white blood cells in the blood. The biggest white blood cells are made up of these cells. They enter tissues in response to inflammation and undergo differentiation into macrophages and dendritic cells after leaving the circulation. Macrophages These are present in the tissues and organs and engulf and digest pathogens missing certain surface proteins to healthy body cells such as malignant cells, bacteria, cellular debris, etc. They discharge a variety of compounds, including enzymes and complement proteins, as well as regulatory substances like interferons, interleukins, etc. Since these processes absorbed antigens and presented them to T cells, these active T cells and consequently the adaptive immune system by serving as antigen presenting cells. Dendritic cells. These can be distinguished from monocytes which are found in tissues that come in touch with the outside world such as skin, nose, lungs, etc. Innate immunity and adaptive immunity are connected by these cells. When they locate foreign particles, they go to lymph nodes where they engage with T and B cells to deliver the antigen and start an immune response. These are referred to as dendritic in that their cellular architecture resembles a tree-like structure. Neutrophils These make up around 65% of white blood cells and are the first immune cells to react to invaders. They deliver messages to other immune cells and squeeze out through capillaries into the infection location. Therefore, they are often referred to as petrol tissue. They have a brief life expectancy of about 8 hours around being expelled from bone marrow. Natural Killer Cells These cytotoxins lymphocytes are the only one in the innate immune system that may react quickly against tumor or virus infected cells without priming or prior activation. These are most recognized for their natural propensity to kill which subsequently aids in the detection and management of early cancer indications. Let's learn the mechanism of second-line defense. Neutrophils mobilize to engulf and eliminate pathogens that have invaded the entrance site. If they manage to avoid the activity of neutrophils, then dendritic cells and macrophages enter the fray aiding in the phagocytosis of antigens and their presentation to T cells. The second line of defense also involves phagocytosis, natural killer cells, an inflammatory response, fever and the complement system. Immune cells as well as infected cells release various cytokines that increase the amount of cytokine production. This results in capillary dilation, an inflammatory response, and enhanced capillary wall permeability. Macrophages play a role in cellular debris removal and the healing of inflamed area. Fever is a consequence of cytokines rising core body temperature. This raises temperature expenditures, healing, and repair procedures while preventing germ development. 
Similar to this, several complement proteins that are contained in the blood serum are drawn to pathogens that have been recognized by the adaptive immune system. Pathogens are coated by a cascade of complement protein binding which act as a flag to identify pathogens in phagocytes and their breakdown during the phagocytosis procedure. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Third line of defense. It is sometimes referred to as adaptive immune system since it develops through the time rather than at birth. These develop long-lasting immunity, a potent immune response, an immunological memory and only target particular infections. Innate immunity takes a long time to develop since there is a lag between exposure and maximum response. However, the response fast to remove when exposed to same antigen repeatedly. It helps you to recognize, dismantle and retain principles. Only when infection gets beyond the first and second line of protection, it becomes active. Tigen presenting cells, B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes are three types of cells that participate in the third line of defense. Cells, B cells, and natural killer cells, which make up 20 to 30 percent of the white blood cells and are located in the lymph, are referred to as lymphocytes. T and B cells are among them and as was already said, natural killer cells are part of innate immune response. This defense includes humoral and cell mediated immune responses. Humoral or antibody mediated immune response. When B cells come into touch with pathogen, they get activated and release antibodies into the circulation as a part of antibody mediated response. After Max Copper's work in the 1960s to examine the function of B cells in which he showed that surgical ablation of the bursa of fabricus, the main location of B cells growth in birds, entirely abolished antibody production in radiated chicken, the designated B cells was created. They both develop and begin in the bone marrow. On the outer surface, B cells produce a variety of antigen specific molecules that aid in antigen identification. Thus, naive B cells undergo clonal growth, and some of these clones develop into memory B cells and plasma B cells, plasmocytes, or effector B cells when they come into contact with an antigen in the lymphatic system. Plasma B cells these inject immunoglobins which are antibodies, whereas the memory B cells provide the immune system a durable memory. Let's learn the mechanism of antibody-mediated immune response. When B cells are exposed to an antigen that matches their receptor, the antigen is internalized, digested and displayed as fragments on the surface attached to specific MHC two molecules. These cells release cytokines, interleukins and other substances. This complex draws mature matched helper T cells. As a result, secreted substances aid in B cells proliferation by stimulating mitosis. Some B cells developed into memory and plasma cells. Antigen-antibody complexes are formed when plasma cells secreted antibodies bind to antigens and are later removed by complement cascade, neutralization, agglutination, precipitation, etc. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Cell-mediated immune response T lymphocytes, antigen-presenting cells, such macrophages, B cells and dendritic cells as well as a number of cytokines are the main players in this immune response. Antibodies are not used. It mostly eliminates malignant cells and viruses. T lymphocytes come in four different subtypes. T helper, T killer, T suppressor and T memory cells. T helper cells CD4 plus. 
these cells release cytokines that promote clonal development of T helper cells, activation of macrophages to cause phagocytosis and B cell division and maturation into plasma and memory cells. Whereas T killer cells or cytotoxic cells CD8+, T cell cause the pathogens DNA to be destroyed by secreting cytotoxins or by puncturing the membrane of the pathogens with porphyrin. Lysis or apoptosis is the effect of this. Third, T suppressor cells, Trig or regulatory T cells. These cells are the component of the body's self-check system that shuts down the T cell mediated immunity once the pathogen has been eliminated. They also aid in the prevention of autoimmune illnesses. Last, T memory cells. Cells do not proliferate unless they have already been exposed to an antigen. When the same antigen surfaces again, they are stimulated to differentiate into cytotoxic T cells and eradicate the infection. Let's learn the mechanism of cell mediated immune response. Naive T cells connect with the major histocompatibility 2 AG complex with their T cell receptor when the antigen presenting cells display antigenic fragments associated with MHC2 proteins on their surface. This contact also results in a number of co-stimulating interactions. Antigen presenting cells start releasing interleukins and T cells start secreting cytokines and interferons which cause them to differentiate into various subtypes of effector T cells. Helper cells are activated by interleukin 1 that T cell release and cytotoxin T cells and B cells multiply as a result of interleukin 2. T helper cell encourage B cells to differentiate into plasma and memory cells. They are linked to indirectly enhancing both cellular immunity and humoral immunity. Cytotoxins and paraffins secreted by T cytotoxin cells kill pathogens or diseased cells. So with this we have reached to the end of the video. Don't forget to eat healthy and do not forget to work out. This is going to build your immunity. Thank you everyone for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss upcoming videos.